For the last two years, I've pretty much only used the built-in LCD on the C70. However, if I were to use an external monitor, this seven inch Shinobi seems to be a pretty good option. It's super bright, pretty affordable, but there are a few quirks with it that you should be aware of that might actually prevent me from using it in a lot of situations. Welcome to Sounded Up Films. My name is Eric. I am a freelancer based out of Boston. And I think that the Canon C70's LCD is pretty much perfect. Perfect for exposing, perfect for nailing focus. And because it's been tailor-made to work with the C70, it does some things that no third-party monitors can do, no matter how big or bright they are. So why did I buy this? Not to use on the camera, but to use as a director's monitor or client monitor paired with a Teradek. I love being able to hand my clients a monitor that they can walk around with. They can give it feedback without having to be like directly over my shoulder. Usually when I'm setting up lights, I like to use it to walk around with, show to other crew members like the gaffer or AC or whoever is helping me set things up so that we can tell what our lighting tweaks are actually doing in real time without having to be tethered to the camera. And for those situations for the past few years, I've been using the small HD 701. But this monitor isn't even close to bright enough. Um, I actually would have never bought it if three years ago I really had an understanding of what different nit values were. 450 is just kind of like, just unacceptable. Even inside, it looks like the monitor went to sleep. Now that I've had more experience with other monitors, I would say that a thousand nits is probably like the floor that I would be comfortable with. But the Shinobi packs a whopping 2,200 nits. I'm not sure how many nits are in the built-in LCD on the C70. I couldn't find that information listed anywhere online, but I'll shoot a quick comparison here with all three of those monitors so you can see. In my experience, the LCD on the C70 is plenty bright if you up your luminance to plus two. The only time it's really a problem for me is in like direct sunlight, and then you have to, you know, put your hand over it to create some shade. So my old small HD is the 701, which I don't even think they sell anymore, but the 702, which is a thousand nits, is two or three times as much as the Shinobi. And the 703 small HD monitor, which has equal brightness to the Shinobi, has a price of like $2,000. If you search on Amazon for seven inch monitor and sort by price, I would stay away from all of those monitors. I have owned some really cheap ones in the past, like this one from Best View. In my experience, they all have terrible latency, really clunky menus that take forever to go through, and just like a bunch of other weird unexpected quirks that you have to deal with on set. It's just not worth it. I would stick to the brand name monitors. And I think the Shinobi seems to be like the most affordable of the trusted brand name bright seven inch monitors. When I bought this though, I had the expectation that occasionally I would hook it up to my C70 and use it as a larger on-camera monitor. And in those situations, I would use it to nail focus and set my exposure. And it does have a bunch of great focus tools, some that I've never had access to before and would, and would be great for an AC. But when it comes to exposure tools, there's a big quirk to be aware of. The false color is designed for Rec. 709, not log. So C-Log2, the log profile that I shoot on the C70, has middle gray at 39.8 IRE, so basically 40. And middle gray is displayed as green in false color on the C70, but middle gray, the color green, is displayed at 44 to 47 IRE on this monitor. Because that's like the general range in which middle gray will live for all cameras and all log curves after you convert them to Rec. 709. So what you have to do is send a LUT from your camera over HDMI to the monitor so that the monitor is reading Rec. 709, not log, and then middle gray will be more or less correctly mapped. You cannot load the LUT directly on the monitor. I mean, you can, but if you do, it will not affect the exposure tools, which is the way that you typically want it to work. That's definitely the way that you want it to work when you're dealing with waveform, because then you can accurately see what is clipping or what is not clipping. If you're applying a LUT, it's gonna stretch things out and could give you an inaccurate representation. But with false color, it has to happen in the chain before it gets to the monitor. So you kind of have to choose if you want to expose with false color or with the waveform, and then that will dictate whether or not you send the LUT over HDMI or load it onto the monitor. You can't have both. 
It's kind of confusing. It took me a while to figure that out, but I do understand why they do this because if you use different cameras with the same monitor, they're all going to have middle gray at slightly different points based off the log curve they're using, you know, S log two, S log three, C log two, C log three. And that is one of the benefits you get from using the C70s LCD is that it's smart. If you are in C log two, it will show you middle gray at exactly 39.8 IRE. And if you decide to shoot in C log three, it will automatically show you middle gray as 34 instead of 39 and there's no chance of a miscommunication happening. What would be preferable in my opinion would be to have false color mapped to log, not to 709, but allow you the opportunity to plug in your camera manufacturer and your log curve. So that way, when you select C log two, the monitor would know this is where middle gray is now. This is where clipping is now. And when you plug in S log three, it knows here's middle gray now. Here's where clipping is now. I'm kind of shocked that it doesn't do this, because you are able to plug in your camera manufacturer and gamma and gamut. And when you do that, it opens up some new features, but it doesn't do anything to false color. False color is mapped to Rec. 709. But the other solution to this would be to do what small HD does and allow you to create custom maps. You can set specific IRE ranges for specific colors and your false colors dialed in perfectly to your log settings. With the small HD, when you load a LUT onto the monitor and then turn on false color, you can choose to either ignore the LUT or look as they call it, or have it enabled if for some reason you want your exposure tools to be reading the Rec. 709 image. I can also see this causing issues if your camera does not allow you to send a LUT over HDMI because that is something the C70 did not allow you to do when the camera originally shipped. That came in a future firmware update. So if your camera is only able to send out log over HDMI, you can't use false color. So just something to be aware of. I recorded the other part of this video yesterday, so now I'm gonna cut to a version of myself in a different shirt on a different day. Sorry if that's a little jarring. So with all that said, this monitor is still a big upgrade for me from the small HD 701 for a client monitor, but I was still considering returning it because of the second issue. Let's turn it on and see if you can guess what it is. This fan is so freaking loud, I almost couldn't believe it. Like if I was using this on my table to monitor myself, there's no way that this would not be picked up in the audio. I, let me, I need to turn this off. This is crazy. Okay. If my client is 10 feet away from my audio source, I'm afraid that would still be picked up. I might be getting a little too riled up about this though. Let's, let's do a test and I'll turn on the monitor and leave it the other, on the complete other side of the room. Um, let's say eight feet away. The monitor is all the way over there. This is the monitor on the other side of the room. Now the monitor is five feet away. Now the monitor is just out of frame. Now the monitor is off. This is my only piece of filmmaking equipment that is actually loud. I have a 300D Mark II right next to me that has a fan in it. If I was to put my ear against it, I could hear the fan. But being even, I don't know, three and a half feet away from it now, it never crosses my mind that it's on. So it kind of shocked me that this little monitor was on a whole nother level of noisy. There are two different fan modes in the Shinobi. You can turn it down to a lower setting that limits your brightness. I tried it out. I turned my brightness all the way down to 1% but still I did not hear any difference in the fan noise. Hey, it's me again. I called Atomos's customer service about this and they said that the different fan modes actually only do different things in their monitors that allow external recording, like the Shogun. They don't really change anything in a monitor that's just a monitor. So I don't totally get why it's even in here, but I changed it to the higher fan setting so that I can get full brightness because it's not any louder. It's loud, but not louder. So listening back to those tests I ran yesterday in my orange shirt, when I had the monitor on the total other side of the room, I did hear it less than I expected. It's definitely not ideal. And I would never put it on my camera if I also had an audio source on my camera, like a documentary handheld rig, but for the intended purpose that I purchased it for, 450 to 2200, is kind of a life-changing difference in brightness and visibility. So I'm super excited to use this thing on set and also for these YouTube videos. Setting up this today was so much easier because I was able to put this right here and see what my lighting changes were doing in real time versus recording for a few seconds, putting the SD card into Premiere 
putting it back in the camera, making a few tweaks, back in the computer, and so on and so on, which is how I typically set up A-roll setups. Of course, I had to power it off before hitting record because of the sound, but it still saved me a ton of time. My one last tiny complaint, which is barely even a complaint about the Shinobi, is that it only has two mounting points, one on the top, one on the bottom, so you cannot add handles to it like I could with my old small HD monitor. I will have to buy a $100 cake if I want to make it easier to grab. And if you're wondering why I'm so fixated on false color, check out this video I'll link up here, which is essentially my love letter to and how to guide for false color, which is such a powerful tool because not only does it help you nail exposure, it actually helps you make better lighting decisions.